God is good. And all the time. Bwana asifiwe. Amen, amen. We give glory and honor to God for this wonderful Sabbath day that he's given you and I to be here. We thank God for this wonderful day. As the ministry of young people, or ministry to young people, we are grateful to God for this wonderful induction Sabbath because officially this is the day in which all the members distinguishes themselves as members of the various clubs. And so we don't take it for granted, but we give glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to take this opportunity to thank the entire church, church members for finding time. It is indeed grateful to be here. I want to thank the church leadership for this opportunity that we can gather here and opportunity to minister to you this day. I want to thank each and every one of us for this day. I'm privileged to serve as the pastoral elder in charge of the clubs. That is the uh, um, uh, adventurers, pathfinders, ambassadors, young adults, AAYP, and also uh, public campus ministries. And in this department, we serve together with various elders. I want to ask the elders serving all the, in all those departments and the entire of the leaders serving in those departments, kindly rise up wherever you are and wave to the congregation. Thank you so much. I want to really appreciate you, Elder Emmanuel, Elder Wanga, Elder Omo, Elder... Kitoto is PCM, Elder Edward for AYP, Elder Omo for Ambassadors, and Elder Wanga for uh, Pathfinders. I want to thank you so much for that. And quickly, I must bring to your attention that these are departments which basically deal with young people. And the young people in this church have lined a lot of things which time and space may not permit me but there are some which are inevitable as death because I have to bring them to your attention. The Pathfinders have organized a very special retreat for the staff come the end of this month, 26th of this month, one day retreat for bonding and to chat ways for this year. You are welcome. Pathfinders also have the basic staff, staff training course. That one also cuts across even to the Ambassador uh, to the path adventurers, we welcome you. The ambassadors have a very special Easter plans for this year. Please lie us with the ambassadors. The same to young adults, the same to AAYP, Association of Adventist Young Professionals, have a very big package for Easter. Some will involve going up to the foot of the, long, the highest mountain in Africa, Mount Kilimanjaro. Some activities will be happening at that mountain. Next month, 18th to 25th, we'll be having the Youth Week of Prayer, Global Youth Week of Prayer. And this one, this time is not just going to be a Youth Week of Prayer. In conjunction with the AYP, public campus ministries, young adults, and ambassadors, we are going to have a youth summit because it is going to incorporate training. It is going to incorporate training in issues of missionary work, prayers. It is going to be a real package. By the grace of God, we may have the man of God, Pastor Godswill Mensa from Ghana, by the grace of God. Lastly, but not least, next year, August 5th to August 11th, that is to be precise, August 5th will be arrival and lunch. And August 11th will be breakfast and departure. The place 
is situated around 16,000 kilometers from this pulpit by air, not by road. The place is Wyoming in Gillette, America. The Flying Marines, as one of the biggest clubs in the entire third planet after Mercury and Venus, are planning to be there. And I know because directors told me, as things are going on, this time we might only have one of our flights. We might take a flight of our own, maybe Airbus A380 series of our own, not combined with any other passengers. We'll be uh, branding it as flying marines, taking us from JKIA, moving at an altitude of 40,000 feet above sea level at a speed of 958 kilometers per hour outside speed. Parents, staff, and pathfinders and adventurers who are in that category, please, we are on motion. See the director, Madam Jacinta, because we want to go there in style. Hallelujah. I cannot forget to thank you so much for the master guides of this church for welcoming the GC president last week in a fat way at JKIA on behalf of the union, the committee which was in charge because I was in charge of the uh, protocol, Pathfinders welcoming him. Thank you so much, uh, the uh, master guides, for doing that. And those who went to Nakuru, you had for yourself the General Conference president appreciating the work New Life Church is doing in reaching out to other people because he read from the, the New Life magazine which he was given and he was so interested for the missionary work which is going on by this church. And he mentioned it and appreciated the good work. Thank you so much, communication team, for that wonderful work. And the entire church, thank you for that one. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, the hour has come for your name to be glorified. Speak to us in Jesus' name. The Bible, in the book of Isaiah, gives us an invitation. But before then, it starts, what comes in Isaiah, builds from Isaiah chapter 50, 53. Before then, I bring to you this story. Some years ago, to be precise, 209. I was privileged to lead a delegation of students and alumni for the East Central Africa Division Retreat in Lubumbashi, Congo. Some of you are privileged to be there. You heard that Lubumbashi was around 3,241 kilometers from this pulpit. We traveled up to the border of Tanzania and Zambia. Tanzanian side, they call it Tunduma. Zambian side, they call it Nakondi. When we reached there, Lubumbashi, Congo was now just around 1,400 kilometers away. But I discovered that in amidst the congregation of the team I was leading, we were together with Pastor Njagi as the union chaplain then, we discovered, we also combined with the Tanzanians and some few delegates from Uganda, we discovered that out of that delegation, five did not have international passports. They had the temporary, which was only admissible in the East Africa community and was not applicable in the Southern Africa Development Com uh, Commission, uh, Commission SADC. And so, we were stranded with these five. What do we do? I went to the immigration officer on the Zambian side and explained to him, fortunately, he was an Adventist. He called me, my brother, come in, sit down. I thought good news was coming. Then he asked me, when did this meeting, when was it planned? I enumerated to him. He told me, you mean these people did not know where they were going that it is outside East Africa community. 
I feigned ignorance. That maybe they did not know. Of course I knew they knew. <laughs> then he told me, this is the problem of us Adventists. We wait up to Friday evening is when we run to go and collect to the supermarket to buy water, to buy groceries. This is the problem. He told me, these people are not traveling with you. He asked me, what is your plan? I told him, I'm planning that soon um, I may send them, maybe I may send them back to Dar es Salaam, to the Kenyan embassy, so that their temporary passes could be stamped to allow them special pass. He told me, my brother, soon may it might be too late. Soon might be too late because the embassy might be closed. Beloved, I tarried there no more. I did not wait for the buses because the buses would leave the following day very early in the morning. I had to negotiate with the petrol tanker driver who was driving from Kapirimposhi in Zambia to take one of them to collect the passports and send one of them back to Dar es Salaam so that the passports could be stamped. Because he told me, soon might be too late, for the offices might be closed. That is exactly what I did. For us, we went, we proceeded with the journey to Kapiri, Ndola, Kitwe, Chililabombwe, Chingola, Konkola, Kasumbalesa, then to Lubumbashi, Kongo. Soon might be too late. Many times, we say, I will see you soon. Soon I will start a program. Maybe I will do this course soon. Soon I will pay you a visit. Soon I will send you something. But this soon might be too late. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24, 25, 26, of people who thought it soon, after a few days, they would surrender their lives to Christ. Festus procrastinated it because he thought soon he would get another opportunity. Agrippa, when he was speaking with Paul, said, in this short time, Paul, you nearly made me to be a Christian. Nearly. Soon may mean nearly. About. At the threshold. Soon. Just about. Ab Within a short period of time, Agrippa said, soon you nearly made me, Paul, to be a Christian. It was so near, yet too far. Soon might be too far. Because he may close down. Brethren, many a times we put things and say, give them timeline that maybe soon we will do it. But you may not know, we may have to go because it may, the offices may be closed. I wonder what the prodigal son would have done if he procrastinated and said, I will go back home soon. If, can you imagine if the prodigal son would have tarried just a bit and came back home and found his father dead? And his elder brother in charge. How do you think the scene would have been? Would it have been the feasting where a calf was slaughtered and good robes were given to him? He maybe would have not even touched, reached the, the, door, the gate. The compound would have not been permitted. He was lucky to have moved. Because soon might be too late. Isaiah chapter 53 Chapter 55, contextually, contextually, the book of Isaiah, and I quote, man of God, Pastor John uh, Joroge in his book, Isaiah, the panorama of the biblical prophecies. He says in those chapters, Isaiah has a Bible within a Bible, because it has 66 chapters, which is equivalent to 66 books of the Bible, and also related that the other Old Testament books also corresponds with the first phase of the book of Isaiah. And the second phase corresponds with the second part. 
contextually, from Isaiah chapter 15, it now moves, shifts from other prophecies, but now takes us to the fulfillment of the promise which was given to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1, where God told Abraham, I will bless those who bless you. The entire world will be blessed through you. That prophecy, Isaiah now was giving the fulfillment from around chapter 53, basically what it meant, what the children of Israel had failed to achieve by being the light bearers of the God's message to all the nations, things which they had even failed to achieve when they are in captivity, now had to be achieved when the gospel message would go to the entire nations, including the Gentiles. Hallelujah. Now, this message had to go to the Gentiles. That is now the fulfillment of that chapter. Contextually, that is what is coming in Isaiah chapter 51, 52, 53, the suffering servant. Now this message, which had to be fulfilled to go to the entire world, to the people, Paul now says in Ephesians chapter 2, that formerly you are not a people. You are not a people according to those who are being circumcised. You are not even a people because you are not in Christ. But because now you are in Christ, you are counted as a people. Hallelujah. Then now Isaiah comes and reminds the people that you were not a people. But this message has to go. And it says, now it comes in chapter 55. And reminds the people that seek ye the Savior or the Lord when it can be found. The question is, why is he reminding the people to seek the Lord? What was their condition that they, need to, they needed to be reminded? We go to the scriptures. And that condition is equated to the condition of the children of God. Before Christ comes. That is why it is critical. The condition of the people. That necessitated. Their reminder. To seek the Lord. Before they were being reminded to seek the Lord. They were living in a condition. Which can be equated. To the condition of God's children. In the present time. What was their condition? The pen of inspiration takes me in the book, Christian Service. If you have time, you can read chapter 3. The Bible, the pen of inspiration gives the condition which was the condition of these people, which can be equated to the condition of God's children in this time. It says, one of the conditions, they lack the missionary spirit. It says White writes that there has been but little of the missionary spirit among Sabbath-keeping Adventists. If ministers and people were sufficiently aroused, they would not rest thus indifferently, while God has honored them by making them the depositories of his law, by printing it in their minds and writing upon their hearts. There was no missionary spirit actually. The message to the Gentiles would have been achieved 500 years before when King Cyrus gave the order for the children of Israel to go back to Jerusalem. But because the wealthy and those who were born in Babylon saw it hard, they did not go. The few who went were poor people who went back to Jerusalem. And when they went back to Jerusalem, they did not allow other nations to help them in building the temple. And that is how the Samaritans came about. Because they said, no, 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 no. We don't want you people. So what they failed to achieve by being missionaries to other nations, which could have been achieved 500 years when King Cyrus gave the decree for them to go back to Jerusalem, it tarried again for 500 years. Missionary spirit was lacking. And that is equated to one of the conditions of the God's people in this time. Missionary spirit lacking. Another point which depicts their condition. We are told 
that these people, these people, they had talents and gifts which God had given them, but they kept procrastinating, waiting for an opportune time. They kept waiting, procrastinating, postponing, saying it is not the opportune time to do it. They always hoped for a better time, only to realize that time has passed, as Jeremiah says, we hoped for peace. Summer has ended, but we are not saved. It was the same condition of these people. They had the opportunity, but then they were not using it. There was spiritual myopia. The people in this place, they were not visionary spiritually. There was spiritual stupor amongst the people in that time. And that is why the fulfillment delayed. It is the same thing which is happening now. That there is spiritual stupor amongst God's people. Though they possess qualities to serve God, they are not using it. To such are reminded that mere possession of qualities which are not used only increases responsibility. Possession of qualities which are not being used only increases responsibility, accountability. And they will be told, you knew your master. You knew your master's will, yet you did not do it. The people of this time are equated to the present generation. Many are spiritually weak. For though the light of God had shone upon them, they had neglected to follow the light. And for that reason, they were in a state of spiritual weakness. Heavens would therefore ask, what more would I do for my vineyard? Isaiah 5 verse 1 says, what more therefore would I do for my vineyard? And Revelation counsels chapter 3 verse 17 to 18. Because you say I'm rich, spiritual stupor, but Revelation says, because you say I'm rich, I have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are rich, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with the eye salve that you may see. Beloved, the condition of the people was wanting spiritually. Though message had now gone to the Gentiles, they, though now they had been incorporated, they had been grafted, now they, were, they could be called a people. The condition at that time was not good. And that is why Isaiah 55 verse 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Beloved, the Bible is full of this call to seek. The Bible is full of this call to seek. Deuteronomy 4 verse 29 says, But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart. Why would the Bible counsel us to seek him? Actually, looking at the scriptures, I discovered that the call to seek, the Bible says where this word is first of all used is in Genesis chapter 4 verse 26. The condition of the people before this call was given was wanting. It was a condition of spiritual degradation. It was a condition of a people who had moved away from God. Genesis chapter 4 verse 26. The Bible tells us, 
Before Adam and Eve sinned, they would see God face to face. But in chapter 4, verse 26, the Bible says these words, and as, for, and as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Men began to call or to seek the safe face of the Lord. What is it that made them to start seeking God? Because there had been separation. Hallelujah. There had been separation caused by sin. This separation, it had been because of sin. David later says in 66 verse 18 of Psalms, that if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me. If I regarded, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me. What is it? In simple term, beloved, the level of spirituality was low. Sin had separated people from God. Then it necessitates, therefore, to be reminded, they, they needed to be reminded to seek God. To seek God when he could be found. What does it mean to seek God? What does it mean to seek God? This text says, the text itself gives us the answer to this. It says in Isaiah 55, it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. It means to seek God involves calling upon him. What does it mean to call God? Call upon the Lord means to pray. To pray. In Psalms 18 verse 6 it says, David says, In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried to my God for help. For us to seek God, it means to call, we must call upon him. We must pray to him. We must be deliberate to seek his face. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. This is a prayer. David says that one several times in Psalms 105. To seek God means to call, it, we must call upon him. What does calling upon him mean? It means we must pray to him. Hallelujah. We should pray for salvation. In Genesis we have read, they are to call upon him for their salvation because they are sinned. Beloved, so when Isaiah says, seek the Lord while he may be found, the other point, the, in other words, if we procrastinate that we'll do it soon, soon might be too late. Recently, a year ago, two, two years ago, I visited home for a funeral. One of my, the wife of one of my paternal uncles had passed away. In that funeral, I met my former geography, high school geography teacher in Rapogi. I met him in that funeral. He had also come. So after greeting him and exchanging pleasantries, I told him, ah, Malimu, I will send you something very soon. God willing, if I go back to Nairobi, very soon I will send you something. I came back to Nairobi. <laughs> after a week or so, I saw in our alumni group of Rapogi boys that the teacher had been knocked down by a pico, by Boda Boda, that is... He had been knocked down by Boda Boda and he passed away. I had thought it would be soon, but that soon did not come. Now I started feeling guilty. How can I compensate for this? Then my thought told me, now you need to ge donate generously. If people are giving 3,000, check the pattern in the wall. If they are giving 3,000, maybe you can give six. Perhaps that can atone for that delayance. Beloved, I realized soon might be too late. Hallelujah. The Bible says, seek the Lord. Call upon him. How do we seek the Lord? It says we must call upon him. 
we must pray to him. And Psalm says, the Lord is in heaven looking at the sons of men. The, the Bible says, the Lord is in heaven looking at the sons. The, Psalms 14 verse 2. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understands who seek God. The Lord is looking down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand who seek God. So it means God is just hovering. He's looking from above. Those who are calling upon him. He's looking at the children of men if they are those who seek or who call upon him. Psalm 27 verse 8. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. My dear brothers, the Bible says, seek the Lord. It means we must cry to him in prayer for salvation. Prophet Joel says, chapter 2, verse 32, Joel says, whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be delivered. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be delivered. So to call him means to call him for salvation. If we don't call upon him, then we cannot be delivered. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Because the Lord is looking from heaven at the sons of men to see if there is any who seek him, who call upon his name for their salvation. Because in a nutshell, all of us had sinned. We had been separated from him due to sin. That is why we are reminded to seek him. Because they had walked away from God. Now they have to call him. We have to seek him for our salvation. We have to pray to him. For whoever, Romans 10 verse 13, Paul says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Hallelujah. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is what we are doing today. When we come to church, we are seeking God. We are seeking him. Seek God continuously by calling to him in prayer. I call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. David says that. Jeremiah says, Call to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you did not know. Beloved, if we do not seek him, we may not know those great and marvelous things. We are calling him for what reason? For our salvation. Hallelujah. But Isaiah continues to say, Call upon him while he is near. Call upon him. While he is near, let the wicked forsake his way. Does it mean there will come a time when God may not be near? Does it mean there will come a time when God is not near? Isaiah says, seek him while he is near. This was a call to the Gentiles also to seek him, to leave their old ways and come to the Lord. While he is nearer, does it mean there will come a time when God will not be nearer? Basically, this text is talking of the probation period. Beloved, you and I are living in a probation period. You know very well that right now, according to Hebrews 7.25, where is Christ right now? He is in the Holy of Holies. What is he doing? Interceding for you and me. That is to say, he is still near. And that is what the Bible is counseling us. Seek him while he is still near. Because the time is coming, you may not be there because you may also die. We may also die. And if we die in sin, then it will forever be sealed. He says, seek him while he may be found. While he is near. We have a responsibility. Though that salvation is guaranteed free, we have a duty 
to seek him, to search for him. In the year 1662, a story is given. You can check later in Google. Mr. Google can give you. A Spain, Spaniard ship had gone to the Newfoundland. The Newfoundland was the Americas. And the ship was loaded with gold. It took around three months to be loaded. It had been loaded with gold, which took around three months to be loaded. And then, as the ship was about to set sail in the present day Florida, to set sail from the port, present day Florida, that time was the Newfoundland. A hurricane came, and the ship had to sink. It sank with all that gold which took three months to be loaded into the ship from around 1662. Later, in around 1960s, another wealthy guy decided that he wants to search for that treasure. He wants to seek for that treasure. He bought equipment, hired divers to go deep under the water to search for that treasure which had, was deep under the ocean. The first year they tried, they did not get. Second year, he bought sophisticated equipment, they didn't get. Third year, they didn't get. Fourth, fifth, sixth, tenth, they nearly gave up. He again invested in sophisticated equipment. Eleventh year, they never got twelfth until the sixteenth year is when they found where the treasure had been lying for over three hundred years. They got one one just one ring was sold at five hundred thousand US dollars. Just a ring, beloved. This person could not give up for sixteen years. The Bible tells us that seek him when he can be found. Interestingly enough, after around three years, the guy died and left everything which he had spent all his life seeking for or searching for. Look at that. But you and I are being counseled to seek that which is a permanent treasure for eternity. Hallelujah. Seek him while he may be found. When the probation is still going on. When Christ can present our cases before the throne of grace. Seek him in prayer. But the Bible also gives a rider that let him. It says in verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the Unrighteous man is taught. Let him return to the Lord. And he will have mercy on him. And to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. Beloved. There is no sweeter message. Than this. That when he can still be found. We can call upon the name of the Lord. And he will forgive us. For he says he's generous and ready to forgive. The epistle of John says he is ready to forgive. My dear brothers and sisters, this call is a call to repentance. Turning from sin is vital in seeking the Lord. Turning from sin is vital in seeking the Lord. Forsaking not only wicked ways, but also wicked thoughts. It says, let the wicked turn away. Let us call him in prayer. But he says, repentance is a condition in seeking the Lord. Hallelujah. That is why Second Chronicles said, the famous verse of chapter 7, verse 14. It says, if my people who are called by my name would seek my face. Chapter 7, verse 14. The same text, it says, If my people who are called by my name 
will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Hallelujah. Repentance is vital in seeking the face of the Lord. Turning from wickedness is key in seeking the face of the Lord. If I regard my iniquity, the, will, the Lord will not hear. David said in 66, 18. Turn from wickedness. When you read the book of Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 9, the key word is return to me. Turn from your wicked ways. Isaiah 44 verse 22, return to me. Jeremiah 4, 2, return to me. Joel 2, 12, return to me with all your heart. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the key. As we are talking of total member involvement, as we are inviting people to seek the face of the Lord, it has to be clear that we have to turn away from our wickedness. Both known and unknown, we must confess to our God to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. It says, the scripture says, we must seek him. Seek God in repentance. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you did not know. Seek the Lord while he may be found. A time will come, the Bible tells us in Revelation, when the probationary work of our Lord Jesus shall have ended in heaven, and then now it will be said, let the wicked continue to be wicked. The righteous continue to be righteous because man will live in a period with no advocate in heaven. Let us seek the Lord while he may be found. Let us seek him by turning away from our wickedness. These people had sunk so much deep into sin until they did not know even what to do and how to come back to Christ. When you read in the book of Haggai chapter 3, sorry, Malachi chapter 3, chapter, verse 7, these people had gone so much into sin till they did not know even how to come back. They say, the Bible says, yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, in what way shall we return? Beloved, these people had sunk the condition of the world had gone so much that people did not know that even worshiping God through tithes and offering is important. They didn't know even how to come back. They asked, how do we return to you? But God is saying, return to me and I will return to you. The same words are repeated in the book of Second Chronicles. The words which came to Azariah, son of Odette, in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 15, the Bible says, The Lord is with you when you are with him. When you seek him, you will find him. The point is, God does not change. It is us who change. My dear brothers and sisters, this day, I bring to us the message from the word of God. Soon may be too late. Soon might be too late. Sometimes I wonder if the prodigal son would have just tarried a bit and found his father dead and found his elder brother as the owner of the estate, where he would have gone, I do not know. Sometimes I wonder, the people who helped Noah for 120 years to build the ark and then left that soon we will come back. How it was. There is a story told of Cambesi. I don't know where it is read. Because I've read Spirit of Prophecy books and I've never met that name Cambesi. I even went and bought the book by Josephus in Keswick 
just to search for that story of this kambesi which people have even composed songs on to kumbuke kisa cha kambesi but all in all whether it is true or it is not it is told that he helped Noah to build the ark for 120 years people who narrate it who used to narrate it once when we were children used to tell us that they helped Noah then the last week kambesi said whether it is true or not i'm saying that the point is clear it is we have been told on the last week kambesi left that no we have been here too long let me go and enjoy kidogo i will come back but no sooner had he left than animals started going to the ark two by two seven by seven for the clean ones People were seeing them, but people could not think. People were seeing them, but they would not think. They got into the ark, and it took another seven days when there is nothing happening. Probation period was nearly still there. Can you imagine? There are animals which are hard to see during the day. Is it easy to see a hyena? Maybe when you go to Masai Mara, that is where they roam. But normally... For you to see a hyena in the day, or some animals, seven, some birds in the day, it's not easy, those nocturnal ones. But imagine during this time, they were walking two by two, going to the ark, and the people were seeing them. Could they even stop and use the math, class five mathematics of if a hyena can move during the day? <laughs> Therefore, they could not stop and do that. We are told these people left thinking we will be back soon. But as they left, seven days, it was things were normal. And then for the first time, they saw the heavens change. For it had never rained. They saw Kumulonimba's clouds started to gather, the dark ones. Because all along it had been Nimba stratus, those white ones. They started to wonder that could be Noah was right. The people who knew the corners of that boat, who knew the corners where the door was and the shutters were, they came running. My friend, they found the door closed. And we used to sing a song in my mother tongue. No, no, yeah. Oh, no. The, we, the song is they were calling Noah no open for us but Noah tells them my friend I know you but unfortunately I cannot open it because I did not close it my dear brothers the message seek ye the Lord while it may be found is a message of introspection that we need to seek God when the time is today there are things we may procrastinate today, but it may be too late. One time I failed to claim my PDM. I, I failed to claim my PDM. I kept procrastinating. I will claim it. My friend, when I woke up now, that now I was ready to go claim it. Things had changed. My PDM went with the water. Soon was too late. My dear brothers and sisters, I bring you the message. The Bible says, let us seek God while he might be found. Mrs. White writes these words. In the book, Christ Object Lesson, the Mrs. White writes these words. There are some who seem to be always seeking for the heavenly pearl. Christ object lesson, page 118. Mrs. White writes these words. There are some who seem to be always seeking for the heavenly pearl, but they do not make an entire surrender of their wrong habits. They do not die to self that Christ may live in them. Therefore, they do not find the precious pearl. They have not overcome unholy ambition and their love for worldly attractions. They do not take up the cross 
and follow Christ in the path of self-denial and sacrifice. Almost Christians, yet not fully Christians. Hear those painful words. Almost Christians, yet not fully Christians. They seem near the kingdom of heaven. They seem near the kingdom of heaven. But they cannot enter there. Almost, but not wholly saved. Means to be not almost, but wholly lost. Almost, this is so painful. Almost, but not wholly saved. Means to be not almost, but wholly lost. Beloved, so near, soon will be there, soon might be too far, might be too late. I bring you good news. In the words of Paul, in the book of Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2, now is the acceptable time, now is the day of salvation. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, but surrender to the Lord. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, but come to the Lord. Be in time. Be in time. Allow me to invite Mama Nathaniel to bring the song, perhaps stanza one or two, Be in time. For Soon might be too late. Life at best is very brief, like the falling of a leaf, like the binding of a sheaf.
Father and our God, we thank you so much for your love to us. Amongst your children who, are, stand, who have stood up, Lord, there are those who are seeking thy face to renew their relationship once again with you when there is still time. There are some, Lord, who wants to rededicate their lives to you. We pray that, Lord, you may come down. We thank you for you've given us the assurance that you will hear us and, Lord, you will forgive us. We pray and confess our sins that, Lord, may you forgive us, that our names may be written and be retained in the eternal book of life when there is still time. Savior, we pray that we may not be out of time, but we may be in time. Our Father and our God, we seek thy face. Lord, for there is coming a time when you may not be found. How we pray that we may be wise to count our days and to invest our time in you when still there is still time. Be with us, be with the children of this church. Be with the youths of this church. Be with the ladies, be with the men. Be with the leadership, be with each and every one of us. That, Lord, may our names be written in the book of life. And that, Lord, we may walk with thee when there is still time. We give you glory. We thank you. That, Lord, we may come for soon might be too late. We may come now. Glory, honor, and majesty be unto you now and always for you ask. In the mighty name of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, our righteousness. Amen.